Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today, Ross Marcogiani, with another great conversation at RevelWell.com. Today we're going to be talking about adrenals and what they do. We're going to be going into what hormones the adrenals produce, what kind of symptoms are really common or associated with um, improper adrenal function. So when our adrenals aren't working correctly, what symptoms are pretty common, and then how we address and take care of these adrenal issues. So let's dive in. So when we're talking about adrenal glands, these are really, really important. I think people kind of just forget to look at them and forget the impact that they have. So when we talk about them, our adrenal glands are these small little glands that sit on top of the kidneys. This is supposed to be the kidneys, and those are our adrenals right on top of them. And the adrenals are broken into two sections, essentially. We have the upper section, which is the adrenal cortex, and then we have the middle section, which is called the adrenal medulla. And then when we're so so we have adrenal cortex, adrenal medulla. When we're thinking about the adrenal cortex, that can be broken up into three layers. The first layer is the zona, glomerul zona glomerulosis, and that releases cortisol. The second layer is going to be the zona fascicularis. That's going to release aldosterone. Aldosterone is going to be important for um, retaining sodium, which will help bring in fluid and balance our blood pressure. And then the last layer of the adrenal cortex is going to be the zona reticulata, and that's going to release our androgens. These are going to be our build-up hormones and our repair hormones. Mainly the big one is DHEA, dihydroecosinoic acid. And then now we move into the, the next portion of that adrenal gland, which is the adrenal medulla, the middle layer. This is going to release our catecholamines. This will be our epinephrine and norepinephrine. So our common issue here, um, the real big issue that we're going to see is fatigue associated with these hormones. And how we see a fatigue with the hormones, first let's dive into catecholamines and the adrenal medulla. So in today's world, our body is really still programmed um, in caveman times. We have a lion placed in front of us. We rev up our catecholamines. We rev up our cortisol. And we focus all our energy and attention to getting away from that lion. We get back to the cave. Now we're safe. Now we can worry about repairing and recovering. And we're starting to diminish our catecholamine and our cortisol response. Well, with today's society, we basically are constantly having that stimulus put in front of our face. That lion is constantly placed in front of our, our face, whether it be through chemical stressors, emotional stressors, and physical stressors. So physical stressors will be like, uh, I slammed my finger in a door, or I broke an arm, or these are really easy to assess stressors that release these two hormones that we just talked about. Then we have our emotional stressors. So this is always having to think about, oh, I have to pick Johnny up from soccer, or I've got to go check the stocks today, or I've got to, I know I've got a big to-do list, or I've got uh, a bunch of emails that I have to get to, or you, you're just zoning out and all of a sudden you hear, ding, the phone goes off, little release of uh, cortisol. Those are really important to be aware of. And then the thing that we do really well as functional medicine, medicine is look at the chemical stressors. So our heavy metal tox, our heavy metal toxicity, our liver clearance, um, looking at the gut and assessing for various pathogens and other bacteria, looking at the adrenals and looking at the function and see how well those are functioning. So those are all stressors that are going to stimulate those two hormones and lead to fatigue. So we're constantly stimulating those hormones, specifically that cortisol, and that cortisol eventually is going to burn out. Also with fatigue, um, and talking about cortisol, cortisol is really important for regulating what's called secretory IgA. Secretory IgA is our first line of defense that basically helps prevent any invaders or any foreign pathogens from getting into the body. And when our cortisol is burned out, we, don't, we can't reproduce that secretory, secretory IgA, and now we just lost our first line of defense. So now we're more susceptible to various pathogens, and we have to rely on our immune system constantly being revved up, which requires energy, leading to more fatigue. As well here, in cortisol, if you can see this is a little image of cortisol rhythm. So cortisol should be high in the morning, low at the night, kind of goes with the sun. Typically what we'll see in cortisol dysfunction is that cortisol will be elevated at night. And what happens here when cortisol is elevated at night 
It prevents the production of growth hormone, so we can't repair and recover if our cortisol is, high, is higher at night. Also, with DHEA, cortisol and DHEA go hand in hand. So if cortisol is high, DHEA has to be high. And that's good because it helps us repair and balance, but eventually we end up burning out these two hormones and now we just can't repair almost at all. Um, so that's really important with, with talking about fatigue. Then we talk about GI distress. Again, going back to secretory IgA. So if we have that first line defense that's down, we're more susceptible to getting those pathogens like I talked about. We're more susceptible to dysbiosis, leaky gut, intestinal impermeability. So we're just basically having a difficult time to prevent those uh, invaders from, uh, prevent them from making a home, basically. Uh, then we'll talk about hormonal disturbances. So this is a really important issue here. So the body is always going to shift its energy to surviving, to taking care of the moment uh, at hand. And it really will start to uh, prevent reproduction or not prevent but cause, cause issues when it comes to hormonal uh, regulation. Because it doesn't really, it's not really concerned about recovering and reproduction because it just wants to survive at that moment. And what happens is what is known as pregnenolone steel. So we have our pregnenolone and then cortisol can be, can be down-regulated to either progesterone or cortisol. And basically, so think of it as like, um, like a line. So first we have our pregnenolone, then we have our progesterone, and then we have cortisol. But if we don't have adequate cortisol, we're going to shift to trying to make more cortisol so we can deal with the stress at hand. It's, the body's going to tell, listen, we don't need to reproduce right now. We need to deal with the stress at hand. So it's going to downregulate to cortisol and we're going to have issues with our hormonal production, which creates a lot of uh, menstrual issues, uh, excessive GI bleeding or bloating, discomfort, uh, other issues and associated symptoms that go with, GI, uh, with menstrual stress. So really important that we balance our cortisol, we balance our DHEA. That's going to... Um, help with our hormonal disturbances. Then weight gain. So an issue with our weight gain here is if we have high cortisol. Cortisol is what's known as a glucocorticosteroid. So as you notice in that word, gluco, glucose, blood sugar. Glucose is associated with blood sugar. So if we have low blood sugar, along with a couple other hormones, we're gonna release cortisol and raise our uh, blood glucose back to normal. But if we're not having correct balance of cortisol, we tend to overshoot and we raise our blood glucose too much. When that happens, the body says, now we need to bring our blood glucose down, so we release insulin. And insulin will end up lowering that blood glucose. But since we have too much and we overshoot, we're gonna end up releasing too much insulin and now we drive it down too far. So think about it as a roller coaster, constant roller coaster. We're going up real quick, we're going down real quick. We're going up real quick, we're going down real quick. And as we go down real quick, that creates a lot of cravings and a lot of um, other food issues where you're just constantly having these cravings and can't, um, can't get satiated. Also, when we're up real high and we have that high release of insulin, as you may know, insulin is our fat storage hormone. So it's gonna be impossible to lose weight when our insulin's high and saying, to the body, we constantly need to take this glucose and store it into our adipose tissue as fat. How do we take care of these issues? Well, what we do is we do adrenal panels that look at the adrenal function in the cortisol and DHEA, DHEA rhythm. And from these labs, we assess, not guess, we assess the correct levels of cortisol and DHEA, and we create a program with pregnenolone and DHEA which uh, with very specific small incremental amounts of bioidentical hormones essentially. And all we're doing is we're just tricking the body and giving the body enough um, of these hormones to just simulate regular hormonal rhythm. So we're not influxing the body, we're just tricking it with very small incremental amounts that would naturally be produced 
in a regular cortisol rhythm. So I hope uh, this was helpful today. And if you know anyone that can benefit from this video, please share this with them. Because like I always say, we're in this together to become healthier and happier. I really appreciate your time. Thank you and have a great day.